Okay. So uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm just going to leave this as is because uh, uh, if I cut out what was at the start, it uh, messes with the uh <coughs> video quality for the entire thing. So anyway, this is a diagram of my experimental greenhouse, pretty much as is. I haven't changed that much, so this is essentially what it looks like today. But uh, it started uh, nearly two years ago, and I'm just going to show you how it started. Um. All righty. So uh, this is me putting in the foundation. So the ground was uh, sloped quite a bit from one end to the other. It doesn't really show the slope here, but it might have been 30 centimeters a, a foot higher than the, um, the, fo the footing here. And then the footing trails off to being, um, actually maybe more than 30 centimeters, trails off to being uh, just below the ground on, on the far side. So that's, oh yeah, up here, it gives the date and the time of day when um, when the picture was taken. So that's 2020 and the 20th of November. So here I am, I'm digging out some of the soil inside it and taking it away because it had to go under the ground and um, I didn't have that much room for soil. So I had to move things around back and forth um, at the time. Uh, this is um, this is supposed to be in order of the days of the pictures taken. So, so um, the first thing I did was I put on the door and leveled up the door so I had uh, uh, kind of like uh, a tripod, you know, uh, something behind the door holding it up, and something uh, the other side. Put on the sliding door, and then put um, pushed it up and. Uh, uh, put this metal up beside it, etc., etc., up straight. And this here is, there's, uh, I think it's about 14 feet, so it's about um, uh, almost five meters long uh, piece of wood here <coughs> that I put to the, the end, leveled it with, um, I have a laser level, uh, leveled everything up and um, um, got it to the right high here so everything's level on the roof and square. Uh, more digging. Um, so the, the photos they don't seem to exactly be in. Uh, so um, now I've set in the windows here. So I've set them on a piece of metal with a, a p uh, some sort of rubber thing on top that I, I was given. And the windows I was given, all the day, every piece of glass for this was free. Uh, the bricks are, uh, I think I might have paid a tiny amount of money for the bricks. You know, they were from a teardown. So uh, bricks went up to um, whatever level it is there, all the way around, and um, on the foundation. Another picture here. It was really messy uh, weather when I was doing it. So this is still in 2020 on uh, the middle of um, December. And I did this uh, on days when it wasn't really good to, to work at, at my job. So brickwork coming along and a real mess inside. Um, coming along, coming along slowly, slowly. And this is uh, still, uh, it was, it's the sloppiest time of year in Victoria. Uh, now we're up uh, to uh, a height where it's, it's to stop it raining on the, the bricks. Roof, I was asking people questions, uh, should the roof slope to the front or to the back? So I had five huge big pieces of glass to put on the roof that I got for free because the lady had six pieces, but the uh, workers broke one of them while they were installing them. So she got um, in her in her roof, so she kind of panicked and decided glass windows are not for me, so um, um, in the roof, so she gave them away. Uh, so anyway, I decided to put the windows at the front of the roof, and uh, so I set it up uh, to put the windows on. So there's how it's set up. 
Now this is how the planters work. So I have um, uh, uh, water. This isn't um, exactly how it's done. The, this green, uh, this is just a diagram. The green pipe comes along pretty much straight across from, uh, it's connected to here. But uh, in the diagram, it's just uh, easier to show it like that. So I have uh, uh, a hole in the ground with a pipe in it and an airlift pump in it. So it just air blows, uh, goes down there and blows water up into a container where um, a boar scare trips and waters my plants. It's pretty good. I call it soil aponics because it's not hydroponics, but it's not ordinary irrigation either because the water gets cycled. Uh, here's the, the plan with air. So I have a fan up at the roof blowing the, mo uh, the moist air, the light moist air down, goes in under the water, through the water, and uh, cools down. So uh, because the greenhouse, the greenhouse gets too hot. So the idea is to um, um, keep the air um, at a temperature that's livable for the plants while um, storing heat overnight in the water and in the soil. So here's the soil version. Now, um, you, you probably can um, s stop this, uh, you know, pause here and just read up <coughs> the theory stuff. So my um, uh, my greenhouse is uh, about 12 feet long by 8 feet wide, so that's um, it's roughly 10 square meters greenhouse, and it's uh, two and a half meters high, roughly. So um, yeah, so I, I ca did the calculations here of uh, um, heat. Now, obviously, you're not going to when this goes down, you're only going to get a little bit of heat out. Um, so. Uh, but this was for demonstration purposes only. Um, now, uh, you get the little heat out, but you also get condensation of water. And the condensation of water releases heat. And it's, it might be more heat uh, released here just from condensation than there is uh, actual uh, uh, heat absorbed just from uh, the cooling of the air. So that's important. Uh, uh, this is just uh, the glass I used was uh, for the roof was reused, so I had to get the um, uh, roughly ten-year-old silicone off it, and the silicone was perfectly stuck to the glass after ten years. So I used these, and I used some sort of uh, uh, some sort of oil that weakens silicone. Uh, so now I'm starting to put on the the glass on the back of the greenhouse. No more pictures of that. Getting the black back ready. So I have these, um, these pieces of metal have a kind of a rubbery um, thing on them and I just laid the glass down on that so it wasn't uh, in full contact with the metal or with the wood. And an important aspect of this greenhouse is to make it um, rodent proof. I don't want to ever see rodents eating my tomatoes because that's horrible. And here we go um, a bit further along. So I'm all building up the roof here, getting the, the roof all uh, built up. So I had scaffold inside the greenhouse. This is for when I uh, this is uh, so I, I did everything on my own the entire uh, greenhouse from start to finish was uh, just me me alone so I had to do everything this was when I push up the um, slide up the glass onto the roof I had to have something to hold it uh, that I didn't slide off again uh, while I set in the silicone and this is why I used um, some of these and you just uh, swing them around and um, uh, And getting more of the roof done. So now the roof is practically done. And I've got string along, uh, st uh, and these were pushed in so that the, the wood would just touch the string. And the same type of deal on this side. Y you um, got the wood uh, set up so that it would just touch the string, and then you um, 
put uh, little stabilizing pieces in place underneath it. Um, cutting uh, for the for the end triangular windows up at the top, I used um, Perspex uh, plexiglass and I cut it with an angle grinder with a zip disc on it. So the disc uh, um, you made uh, it's kind of like uh, silk. You made um, this kind of uh, icky stuff when you cut, but it cuts really nicely. And you know, there's a cut. It cuts really nicely, but uh, a little bit of a pain to use, but it was the best thing that I found for cutting it. Um, so we're getting ready now. Uh, everything is starting to look okay. And I cut little uh, cuts on the, um, on the wood to... Um, uh, because uh, silicone rubber sticks well to glass, but it doesn't stick that well to wood. So if I have these little notches on it, uh, the silicone, it's not going to, uh, when it loosens off the wood, it's not ever going to slide down. It's going to have these little um, grips. So I put the grips on all over the place. And then I, uh, when I put the glass on, I put the silicone in from underneath, uh, in uh, underneath and uh, through along the grips. So this is silicone I use. It's 30 year silicone, so it should be pretty good. And um, then I have these on top over the glass uh, with silicone on top too. So um, it's not gonna slide. And also I put little things underneath, little rubber things to stop it from sliding if there's, um, well, it's not gonna slide. Uh, this is the top. Um, yeah, they, these have a little groove underneath, so you push the the, um, the glass underneath by uh, a small amount, you know, maybe a centimeter and a half, something like that. Uh, silicone uh, into all the cracks, or the joints, and then you whip through the roofing. Oh, uh, this is just showing. I've got rubber underneath here so that the wood doesn't rot from water wicking up from the bricks. Here's the roof. Roof's finally on. So when the roof ca came on, um, things started drying up very nicely inside. Then it snowed. So this is uh, just, uh, that's the street there, it's snow. And uh, so this is 2021, the 14th of February. So quite a lot of snow, and this is snow on the roof. Uh, lots of condensation inside. Uh, this is uh, making the hole for the um, uh, for the air lift pump. So I've uh, I'll show you. So I've put um, I've, uh, a small um, layer of uh, I guess you call it concrete. It's mortar, really, along uh, this side of a path that I made in the middle of the greenhouse. And uh, then I dug out the hole. Oh, more snow, more snow. Um, so I've layered this with uh, the, um, the mortar underneath and smoothed it with a brush. And then uh, six mil plastic uh, against this, um, the, um, the mortar and then um, pond rubber on the inside. So the pond wood, uh, rubber was quite expensive. Now this is a um, uh, a pipe and it's got these little balls and I forgot where I get these, but uh, they were to lay it on the um, the bottom of the pond rubber. I'm gonna stop here now, and that's. What we're calling 